five years old, you can't yeah. even swim without floaties, and you want to lop <laughs> off your yeah. dick. Yeah, no, that's. I uh, mean, the parents. I'm not talking idea. to the five year old kids because no. you can't even use these words. <laughs> Question of the day: Where do you? Where's the line between being a child performer and being the victim of? Child abuse. Let me explain the context yeah. here before we get to this Vice video we're going to rebuttal. Uh, I want to be very clear because our recent, not recent, three-year-old video on Stephanie, the 56-year-old <laughs> yes. trans five-year-old, <laughs> was removed know. from YouTube for apparently wow. uh, making They're people on top feel of things, aren't they? <laughs> apparently the entire 56 year old trans five year old community was stunned that we were not supporters wow. of them. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think transitioning <laughs> children is child abuse. Right? You let me know what you think. Change my mind. You're more than maybe we could do a change my mind, but oh, I would yeah. probably be hey. acid milkshake. Uh, of course, <laughs> yeah, activists right now, the transgender yeah. activists, and what you see at Vice, um, they claim that the right hates science. This is yeah. something that we hear a lot. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I cannot fathom that argument when you see these kinds of videos at Vice. When you see the kind of anti-scientific rhetoric. Uh, really that's being substituted with an agenda. So here you go, Vice yeah. had this documentary, you look at how parents should know when to have their children transition to the opposite gender. As families try to support their children and lessen the potential for self-harm, they're now forced to weigh the options of early medical intervention. Now kids like eight-year-old Max O'Brien can delay the onset of puberty right using drugs like called hormone walkers. <laughs> Max goes to Boston Children's Hospital, which opened the first clinic for transgender youth in the U.S. Since 2007, I wouldn't let that woman around my kid because of her haircut. And teens. <laughs> in the past couple of years, our volume has just about doubled. Well, I saw a white lab coat in there. Wow. Color me convinced. <laughs> you know what's also, by the way, before it's we get legit. to the substance, I know this is ad yeah, hominem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. find it weird that they say uh, a drug known as hormone blockers? Like, that is a colloquialism. <laughs> but that's like a drug known as clomiphene citrate. It's like a drug known as a painkiller. Yeah. A drug that is a chemical which does something medically. Why would they say oh it's gosh. a hormone blocker? You don't need to say a drug known as hormone blocker. No, you just see it's, it's a hormone blocker. So they, they, this is what Vice does. They have these interviews with these experts, right? People right. in white lab coats. Um, right, yeah. What they don't tell you is that these trans activist doctors actively perpetuate anti-scientific myths about transgenderism and then completely ignore huge amounts of evidence that contradict their do dogma. And something else, they're talking about uh, young children. Yeah. Here's something I want to genuinely know because weighing their options because of how their children feel. Some of these kids are eight-year-olds. Yeah. yeah. We don't allow eight-year-olds to make decisions about anything, specifically sex, right? You don't allow, an, an eight-year-old cannot <laughs> yeah, consent to rule. sex. You don't right. allow them to make any sexual decisions, yet you are yeah. allowing them to make decisions that will permanently alter their sexual functioning and their social sex life for the rest of their life. Yeah. In what other scenario can you imagine us do, this is the only scenario we allow eight-year-olds to make permanent, life-altering sexual decisions. Yeah, and I think yeah. it's important to know, in this video, they spent about the first five to eight minutes uh, telling you family stories, really trying to soften you up to situations, and they start off with a five-year-old. Yeah. They start off with somebody who was maybe looking at transitioning at three and four years wow. old. Like, and this entire thing is meant to think that this is such a hard life that we have to do this. So they're trying to set you up for an emotional troll, Transitioning not science. Five years old, you can't yeah. even swim without floaties, and you want to lop <laughs> off your yeah. dick. Yeah, no, that's. I uh, mean, the parents. I'm not talking idea. to the five-year-old kids because no. you can't even use these words. No. How can you even describe <laughs> the naughty word the procedure you, you can't want use. when you can't even use them without putting a nickel in a swear jar? Okay, <laughs> next clip. Another one is really kind of the psychosocial development. Our brains are supposed to be, ex you know, exposed to estrogen and testosterone. Okay. You know, if you're not getting your sex steroids, do you still go through that? And how important is that in gender identification? We don't know. Uh, no, actually we do know. Okay, so they're talking about <laughs> giving hormone blockers to kids. Right. right? Giving them uh, hormone blockers seems to lock them into a permanent condition of gender dysphoria. Yeah. This is something people don't talk about. And yeah. it's important, we'll come back to it. If the kids don't transition early on, about 75 to 90% mm. of the kids wow. completely grow out of it. But That's if you look incredible. at those who wow. undergo the puberty blockers, drugs commonly known as hormone blockers, yeah. but what are they uncommonly known as? You wouldn't be able to pronounce it. Well, they just say hormone blockers. <laughs> <laughs> if You're you look at the that. kids who undergo hormone blockers, the number drops from 75 to 90% who grow out of it oh, to zero. zero. Grace! Oh, wow. Okay. Uh. <laughs> That's incredible. So let's get to some other, other some some of the other myths that you see in this video. Um, they try to also tell you that puberty blockers, hormone blockers, are reversible. If Max changes his mind at any point, um, we can release the blockade, and the blockade? we know from lots of <laughs> this people Cuba? Of experience this Star Wars? that he will go into puberty on his own, <laughs> a female puberty. To me, Wrong. blockers is again, it's not a permanent thing. It just puts a pause for a while. 
No, it is much more severe than putting a <laughs> pause. Yeah. That is By the wrong. way, it's, isn't it nice that you can yeah. just say, like, just put a pause. A pause to what? A pause to the fusing of growth plates and proper hormonal yeah. development yeah. as long oh. as facial structure, ligaments, overall connective tissue. He really could be walking around like he has rickets. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it can permanent, hormone blockers can permanently affect height. Okay, girls can yeah. have a male growth spurt. Guys can end up with a, a female stature. Okay? Yeah. These are not things that you can correct. Do you remember, by the way, what we're talking about this? Do you remember as a kid when they used to tell you, don't drink coffee, it might stunt your growth? Yes. They used to say, don't, or yeah. no lifting weights, and we're like, don't lift weights too young, yeah. don't, don't drink coffee. You're like, oh, I might, I might shave off an inch and a half. But now we're talking about either pumping those, their, their bodies full of estrogen yeah. or yeah. foreign hormones. But it is remarkable to me that they just say, they act as though, ah, this is just very mild, you know? Yeah. We can just put you on hormone altering puberty blockers, and if you don't like it, you could go back. Well, no, hold on a second. The le <laughs> first, do no harm, right? You've heard yeah. of that with doctors. How about we don't put them on hormone blockers yeah. and yeah. see if they figure it out, especially when 75 to 90% of them don't end up being having gender dysmorphia for the rest of their life anyway. Yeah. And by the way, uh, while we're talking uh, about hormone blockers, it's important to note that even having naturally low levels of a lot of these hormones can damage the human body, yeah, right? So low absolutely. testosterone in men linked to diabetes, heart problems, obesity, uh, other hormones, particularly in women, estrogen, can, they help uh, contribute to mental well-being, low yeah. levels, strongly correlated with increased suicide attempts. This is something to think about. We already have a certain demographic here, transgenders with an insanely high suicide rate. Yeah. Do we really want to start sev to severely alter hormones which directly correlate to one's mental state yeah. at a younger age? By the way, hit the <laughs> notification bell we're talking about mental state because subscriptions don't mean a whole lot anymore. <laughs> Join up at Mug Club, ladoscutter.com slash Mug Club unless you just want Vice to win and uh, subscribe on iTunes. Okay, another thing they tell you, you know, the kids won't be able to be themselves if you don't let them trans. Someone oh. think of the children, transgender yes. children. We're trying to do is provide the treatment, the care, um, for young people who, in the absence Asian of or just very that scowling? care, I can't tell. <laughs> have a very high likelihood of taking their lives. So my sense is cross-sex hormones, pubertal blockers are absolutely medically necessary. That's your oh. feeling, only it's wrong. <laughs> It is not Gosh. true. How does that yeah. pass as a medical opinion? Well, you know, here's the thing they don't talk about. People under, with gender dysphoria who undergo surgery, they're still 19 times more likely to commit suicide than the general population. You cannot wow. find Gosh. that kind of a demographic anywhere outside of, okay? From what I understand, paranoid schizophrenics, you don't even find it in the demographics of American slaves or Holocaust survivors. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's but insane. But we're supposed to believe because they couldn't a take a one. dump at the preferred bathroom at a Denny's. <laughs> But that's why you find them hanging from a noose in the basement. Yeah. Listen, it's not that people have no compassion, right? We're just talking no. about the science and we're looking at the actual solutions to the problem, which, just in the opinion of most people here, is not pumping a five-year-old full of drugs known as hormone blockers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next thing is transitioning. They want to make you think yeah. it's the only option. When people talk about us being such brave and courageous parents and stuff. I just, it's like, I didn't see any other option. The Vice interviewer said that, yeah. right? Like to me, he I don't think he would have made it. I mean, the stuff that he's said and felt. And so I want a live kid. I want my kid. I don't care. I'll take him as a boy. It doesn't matter to me. You know, I don't know. Uh, People just say I'm a brave, courageous parent. I don't I don't consider myself a hero <laughs> just because I gave Not my me. kid some anastrozole or clomiphene citrate. I don't know. I don't think I deserve a medal pinned on this jacket. I do have a few here that I uh, got from the Vice interviewer with the uh, angry lesbian haircut. Um, <laughs> Jeez. By the way, none of this is oh none of this is true. We feel like we would have lost her. They're talking about a five-year-old. How many yeah. five-year-olds are committing suicide? Five-year-olds no. don't talk like this. They no. don't. No. They don't. In the video, was a five-year-old goes, "I am happier now. I'm more." Fulfilled because I am comfortable in my own skin. Like, yeah. What are you, what? What are you Wendy Williams? <laughs> yeah. They're still going to be 19 times more likely to exactly. commit suicide than the general population. That's what I mean. If they go through with the transition, right? Yeah. Now, if you get them therapy, even without therapy, yes. but specifically with therapy, the numbers get better. 75 to 90 percent of those kids will grow out of it, right? Yeah. So, any way you look at it, 75 to 90 percent will grow out of that 19 times the general population yeah. suicide rate. Yeah. So, if you want to be a good parent, you say, I think I may have, you know, my six year old was looking up. Old old derby single safety razor blades. And I said, why are you adding that to Amazon cart? What five, six-year-old <laughs> yeah. is killing themselves? <laughs>
Right. Yeah. That's no. an actual brand of okay, si- I was double-edged to say, safety I razor, by there. the way. That's what uh, yeah. Michael Keaton was using in Pacific Heights. But I, So I would say, if you, as a parent, <laughs> if you put those two stats next to each other, you can have 19 times the suicide rate or 75 to 90% chance that things are going to get better. Right. Yeah. Regardless it's of easy whether you DVR RuPaul's it's Drag so Race hard. or not. <laughs> yeah. This isn't a hard this is, question. This is, this is the only option. It's like, it's like overweight people who go straight to getting lap band. It's like, well, hold on a second. Did you exercise? Did you diet? Did you go to the nutrition? Ah, uh, stomach stable. <laughs> No, how about you just revoke your Trader Joe's snack aisle card? I don't know if they sell cards specifically for straight, but it is. They probably it, don't. They are not as healthy as you would think they are. <laughs> Definitely not as healthy, but it does seem to be the wrong way out of the solution. Also, That's completely right. unrelated, but 40% of those patients uh, are overweight again in five years. Oh. Which, again, would correlate to this Dang idea of the quick out that these yeah. kids are not going to have. They're not going to be plagued by, by mental disorders for the rest of If, if yeah. you don't solve the mental issues here, okay? you don't solve the likelihood of a suicide rate. That's the truth. If you're yeah. talking about helping these children, putting them into, uh, anyway, uh, let's let's go on to the next, next. there is no next clip. Uh, this, this is it. This is it. There's too much. There's a 28 minute it. video. There was, I yes, wish there were it. more there. We went to the Transgender Town Hall at one time, remember in yeah. Vermont, and it was banned from YouTube with Dr. Rex Butt. <laughs> remember that? Were, an were, unfortunate name. They were coaching that. us on how Real to put name. our kids yes. to hormone replacement therapy. Yeah. It's really scary when you have, you have di- doctors, you have entire medical practices who are, they're practicing this on gender theory, not science. Right. And a, a lot of the reason for this, that you're seeing this, there's, there's a bigger reason at play here. The left wants to criminalize everyone who doesn't recognize this. Doctors, yeah. pastors, coaches, you look at some of the bills that have been proposed, right? If you don't use the, pro- we already see it in Canada. If you don't use the proper pronouns, not only proper right. pronouns, I should say, if you don't use the pronouns that someone determines on a day-to-day basis and it changes Correct. on any given day, yeah. mm-hmm. they want that to be criminalized. It's even scarier when you think that these people uh, who, who want, they also believe that healthcare is a human right. Yeah. So it just shows you there's no limit to what they'll demand. And it's not about catastrophic care. care. Yeah. It's not about basic care. It's not even about birth control. It's not even about providing yeah. 16 out of the 21 birth controls that you see with Hobby Lobby. So they show up and they protest and they have Sandra Fluke. Yeah. It's about <laughs> all the way up to drugs known as hormone blockers for seven-year-old kids. Yeah. Right. And they believe this should be subsidized by the taxpayers, who, by the way, can have no say in helping children transition to the opposite gender. And, and, and one thing I hear a lot, I hear a lot of people say, like, this isn't really a big deal. You know, the, the free speech stuff, the kids on campus, the gender, st- the culture war stuff. Let's just talk about, it's the economy, stupid. But we are <laughs> literally talking about completely eliminating the entire concept of gender by extension, the family, the nuclear yeah. family, the central building block for, the, for all of Western civilization's way of life. This is probably the most important issue that we're facing today. Saying that men and women are of no intrinsic value, are not unique, and are fundamentally interchangeable from as early as five years old. It yeah. will make us worse husbands, it will make us worse fathers, it will make us worse mothers, it will make us worse parents overall, and it'll make us a weaker people. By the way, this is all done predicated on the idea that doing this is compassionate. Well, you know what? You are putting these people into an estrogen injected shallow grave. And I hope you feel good about I hope your white guilt is worth it. Hey there, if you like this video, this is the part where I would usually tell you to subscribe, but I can't do it anymore. I'm going to tell you to subscribe, and then YouTube is going to decide that we can't reach you, even though you subscribe to this channel, and then I'll say hit the notification bell, and then the notification bell won't even be there anymore. I don't know what to say. More than likely, you'll find my face in a milk carton. But do what you can to stop it. It's just, it's just, it probably won't do much.